तो लेट स्टार्ट डिस्कसिंग अबाउट टीसीपी हेडर इन टीसीपी हेडर पर्टिकुलर सेगमेंट कैन कंटेन लेट से 20 टू 60 बाइट हेडर राइट इन इफ यू रिमेंबर इन यूडीपी द हेडर इज ऑफ फिक्स साइज एंड सर्टेनली आफ्टर एडिंग हेडर यू कैन एड ऑन डेटा राइट इन दिस केस हेडर इज इज ऑफ 20 बाइट बट इन केस यू आर एडिंग सम ऑप्शन इट कैन कंटेन अप टू लेट्स से टोटल लेंथ ऑफ 60 60 60 बाइट राइट नाउ लेट्स डिस्कस द फील्ड द वेरी फर्स्ट फील्ड इज सोर्स पोर्ट एड्रेस uh it is a again 16 bit field right it defined the port number of the application program for example i am running my process on some port number let's say 10022 see then uh, ultimately there will be some destination port number let's say i want to send them some email let's say email uh, operates on some particular port number that port number is let's say 25 right so i can send that it is of 16 bit so certainly to rest to power 16 minus 1 will be the maximum number starting from 0 right sequence number acknowledgement number i have already told you that it is the starting byte number and acknowledgement number is the number which you which the receiving process expect next byte to be i have already explained in the previous video right after that there is a bit called header length header length is of 4 bit it it work like uh, the same in ip this 4 bit field indicates a number of 4 byte word for example in the tcp uh, the minimum length will be 20 byte and maximum will be 60 right so the therefore the value of this field can be either 4 uh, sorry 5 or 15 so 4 byte um, will be multiplied 5 into 4 will be 20 and 15 into 4 will be 60 So five, ten, something like that. That value can be used by this, right? Reserve bit. I don't know the reason of uh, reserve bit because they have reserved it for future use. In, in no literature, it is mentioned why it is being reserved. So that's it for this particular field. Uh, this flags bit. I'm going to discuss it uh, in a moment, right? Before that, I would like to discuss window size. Window size is again 16 bit. So uh, see, this fields define the size of the window. and it is in bytes right uh, that the other party must maintain while receiving for example i am sending something to you right certainly you will have some sort of buffer so you can specify me that uh, um, mr shiraz i can receive only this much amount of data so the maximum length of the uh, this particular window is 65535 reason is 16 bits now uh, this value is usually uh, receive written as a receiving window right it is determined by the receiver for example your system cannot uh, receive more than 2000 byte so you can specify me that i cannot receive more than 2000 byte right now uh, there is another uh, particular window called condition window which we are going to discuss later on but for the time being let's understand window size define the maximum amount of data that you can handle checksum uh, the difference between checksum of uh, this and udp is that in udp checksum is uh, let's say optional in this case it is mandatory right it is a 16 bit field uh, that allows the calculation of the checksum for tcp uh, the same procedure used uh, and other than that you are going to add on the same pseudo header that we have added in the operation of udp for udp checksum uh, calculation you can refer to that video urgent pointer urgent pointer is again 16 bit see sometimes you need to send some urgent data in that case uh, this field is valid only if this urgent flag is set if this value is not set this field is uh, not going to be valid now it defines the number that must be added to sequence number to obtain the number of last urgent byte in the data section of the segment uh, the number you have received over here this number will be added to this and for example you are having a bit train right in that bit train very from the very first byte to the byte till urgent data is there you are going to have that i am going to come on that don't worry about that i am going to give a proper example for this options uh, this can be up of uh, up to 40 bytes and uh, these optional information can be anything right there are lots of things which can be sent as a option so i am not going to discuss option in this because that's a very uh, un detailed topic right now let's move on to flags that i have already left these are also known as control field right uh, the flag uh, basically it has six uh, values see multiple bits can be set at a time that means set means the value can be added as 1 1 1 1 0 1 something like that now urgent flag is set when you need to send urgent data acknowledgement is valid when you need to send acknowledgement push 
that means in case you require the data to so be processed immediately then you can request for push operation reset the connection when you want to reset the connection like uh, you want to terminate and restart it synchronize in the starting when you want to let's say create a uh, let's say tcp data transfer so this flag will be set finish when you want to terminate the connection and in that case this flag will be set see multiple flags can be set at the same time this is perfectly possible now how connection is established before um, into diving into the detail of three way handshake connection establishment i would like to cover few things about tcp see tcp is connection oriented a connection oriented transport protocol establish a virtual path between source and destination this is what i have told you earlier right now all the segments do remember all the segment belonging to a message that are sent over this virtual path uh, the one uh, tube i have shown you in the previous session right so using this virtual path for the entire message it enables the acknowledgement process as well as retransmission of damage or loss uh, loss train now the one question might be coming to your mind see over here in case let's say this is your virtual tube right now you will say that that you are using tcp let's say i say that it is a connection oriented but ultimately it is going to pass the data to ip protocol that is connectionless how can you provide connection oriented delivery by using a connectionless services ultimately your packet is going to travel through different different path right now understand this point tcp connection is a virtual connection not a physical connection now tcp operate at higher layer as compared to ip now tcp uses the services of ip to deliver individual packet or individual segment to the receiver but it can control the connection by itself now in case if a segment is lost or corrupted or it is retransmitted right now unlike tcp ip is unaware of this ip3 that this is different packet right but it doesn't know that you are sending the same segment again and again now if a particular segment arrives out of order tcp holds it until the missing segment arrive now ip is unaware of all this reordering right tcp on its own hand, hand going to handle this or let's say going to arrange this now uh, in tcp connection oriented transmission require three major phases first one is connection establishment second one is in data transfer and third one is connection termination so now i'm going to show you now okay let's say this is connection establishment now before the transferring the actual data both side must be involved in a three way handshake right in three way handshaking now what is three way handshaking for example in this case i have a uh, application process called client over here and there is a server process called ser server this which is going to handle the let's say transfer right now it wants to make a connection with another process called server right at at the tcp layer i am not going to show you ip layer over here now the process start with server so in case you are going to generate some or let's say you are going to make any connection between client and server always make sure server should be uh, let's say in operation first now the process start at the server right the server program tells its tcp that yeah i am ready to accept a connection in case you have uh, some request give it to me so that particular state is known as passive open now on the other hand client program issue a request for an active open right it will tell the tcp that i want to connect to the x server let's say this is x server and uh, connect me to tcp now yeah. obviously it will be connected now client will be in the state of active open now in this diagram uh, they have shown uh, by tool timeline as you move downwards time is getting increased right uh, now let's say you send something first right so obviously connection will be initiated by client S server cannot initiate connection in some cases it can but uh, most of the cases it doesn't right so now it has sent some let's say due to uh, due to some let's say logic it has generated some random number or sequence number that is 8000 that means it is going to send byte number 8000 uh, as a very first byte right now it will uh, there is some error over here i don't feel like uh, that it is correct acknowledgement should bit should not be set over here in case it is set then in some terminology you can consider it like uh, like uh, 
that uh, it expect some sort of acknowledgement right uh, so you can go by that so for the timing let's consider it as error now it is a synchronized uh, segment right so synchronized business set now the client sent the first segment a sync segment in which only sync flag is set the segment is for synchronization of sequence number now it consumes one sequence number do remember it consume one sequence number because this sequence number calculation is going to be very, play a very important or crucial role while calculating the data now when the data transfer start the sequence number will be incremented by one or we can uh, or i can say that synchronized segment does not contain any real data but still it consumes one sequence number so when you are going to read the data you are going to start from byte number 8001 now let's say this packet is received at the server now server will receive the packet now the server send the second segment this is called as synchronize plus acknowledgement now in this case two flag bit are set one is acknowledgement and second one is synchronize see acknowledgement is set over here and sequence number is set over here so that's why two bits are set this is called sync plus acknowledgement segment now in this segment it has two purpose first one is server is sending a sync segment and second one is it is also uh, sending some acknowledgement do remember it also consumes one sequence number that is sequence number 15000 correct and uh, see acknowledgement it sent 8001 that means next uh, byte it expect to receive is of 8001 that means the next starting byte it expect to receive is 8001 now let's say this particular data is received over here right after that server will uh, client will send an acknowledgement packet now in acknowledgement there is no sequence number consumed it again sent sequence number 8000 reason is no acknowledgement number no sequence number is used in sending acknowledgement of acknowledgement see this is acknowledgement of acknowledgement right so no sequence number now it send acknowledgement 15001 that means it expects server to send next byte as 15001 and only acknowledgement bit is set on acknowledgement flag is set this is how connection is established between client and server right it's a very easy process but uh, you should know about it right now three conclusion i can draw from this a sync segment cannot carry data but it consume one sequence number that's what i have shown you in very first segment a sync plus ack segment cannot carry data but still it consume one sequence number a ack segment acknowledgement segment that is acknowledgement for acknowledgement it carries no data and consume no sequence number so well that's it for this particular video and next video i'm going to show you how data is transferred in tcp